Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph f of x equals negative tan of x plus pi halves. Um, so to do a problem like this, what we simply need to do is uh, look at identifying what the important point parts are, um, or how this graph is being transformed from its parent graph. So we have to know what the parent graph is, what the parent graph looks like. And let's just actually draw that real quick. So the parent graph has a period of pi and has two asymptotes at negative pi halves and pi halves, something like this. And then the graph falls to the left and rises to the right. So that's what the parent graph looks like. However, we have some transformations. We have this negative symbol, and we have this plus pi half. So how is that affecting our graph? Well, to do that, let's go ahead and take a look at what is the, what is the information um, of the period the x scale, the phase shift, and the vertical transformation. So I like to do this for all graphs that have for uh, tangent and cotangent. So to determine the period, all we do is take pi divided by b. Um, and you might say, well, what is b? I guess I didn't write that in there. So our general transformations uh, for any function, trigonometric function, is going to look like this. All right. So b is just going to be the coefficient of x, which in this case was 1. So it's just going to be pi. Our x scale is just our period divided by 2. So therefore, we have pi halves. Our phase shift is going to be what's in set inside of our um, function. And we just set it equal to 0 and solve for x. So that's going to be x plus pi halves equal to 0. So subtract pi halves, subtract pi halves. x equals a negative pi halves. And our vertical translation is going to be d, what we're going to be shifting up or down. But you can see in this equation, we're not shifting up or down at all. So that's going to be none. OK, so notice on the initial, on our parent graph, we have a period of pi. From negative pi, negative pi halves to pi halves is, is um, a period of pi, as well as the scale, the x scale, is pi halves as well. The phase shift is. It's kind of gave you like where this graph is going to shift. And a lot of times, I like to use the phase shift as my starting point. Um, the initial period or parent graph, a lot of times we start at 0 as our kind of like our initial point. And therefore, we know what to do at 0 for each trigonometric graph. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this graph instead of at 0, but at its phase shift of negative pi over 2. So let's pretend here's 0, and here's negative pi over 2. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm pretty much going to recreate this graph instead of at 0 at its phase shift of negative pi over 2. Now, remember, the x scale is the distance from each asymptote to x, to x intercept to the x asymptote. So to go to my next um, asymptote to the left, that's gonna, I'm just going to have to um, move over another pi halves, which would be negative pi. Then I need to go to the right to find the next asymptote, which would be at 0. So now 0 is going to be an asymptote for my equation. Then I need to go pi halves again, which is now be a positive pi halves to get to the next intercept. And then pi halves again to get to the next asymptote. OK, now the last transformation we see is this negative. And I don't have anything written for the negative, um, because the a negative is telling us our a is negative. Whenever your a is less than 0, so when a is less than 0, then we reflect reflect, reflect, I don't know why I can't spell that, reflect the x-axis. OK? So pretty much what you're doing is you're taking this graph, and whatever it shows up here, you're mirroring it down here. right? So now, instead of my graph falling to the left, rising to the right, it's now going to rise to the left, fall to the right. Rise to the left, fall to the right. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is your tangent graph with a uh, reflection as well as a phase shift. Thanks.